With everything happening around them Charlie and Kirsty meet up with Chris. The duo is planning to leave Yorana for good and let Chris know of their plans. Chris wishes them luck and tells them to take care of themselves. The cop hands them a phone and even around a thousand Australian dollars, which might help them survive until they get back on their feet. The duo then bid Chris farewell and board the bus taking them to Melbourne. When the two reach Melbourne, they are not allowed to live in any decent hotel. Since Charlie was from the 1920s and Kirsty was also from the 80s, and neither of them had any ID, the two somehow managed to get themselves a hotel, but the cashier takes cash payments only because of their situation, going as far as charging them double the rate of a regular hotel, $150 a night. The duo book a room for two days and finally get to rest. After Charlie is asleep, Kirsty head to the bath with the pregnancy kit she had checked earlier. She uses the kit but doesn't have enough strength to look at the results. When she comes down and sits beside Charlie she reminisces about the time when she had lost her virginity to her boyfriend Kev. Back at the lab, Professor Hasten's assistant David is notified by the private security poll that William must be working alongside other people. David notifies him that James might be the one accompanying William. As soon as the phone cuts though, David is also informed that the professor was dead and Phil was missing as well. David immediately calls the headquarters in Sweden to notify them of this mishap. That night, Charlie and Kirsty head to a local pub where Kirsty plans on getting drunk to her wits. While she goes on with her plans, Charlie is very uncomfortable with the whole surrounding. He starts noting other gay men around the bar and remembers the time when he used to work for a local gang and hunt down gay people. He used to lure them and let the gang take care of them afterward. Charlie felt very ashamed and guilty about his past especially because he too was not so sure about his own sexuality. The pub's environment brings back a lot of unpleasant memories, and he decides to get out of the pub. A disgruntled Kirsty follows him out. As they return back to their hotel room, Kirsty notices a pamphlet for an abortion clinic and grabs it. Back at the hotel, as a drunk Kirsty slips into the bathroom to check on her test pregnancy results, a cross-dresser named Raph accidentally enters their room. He was also drunk beyond his wits and so Charlie takes him back to his hotel room. Charlie unknown to the modern world takes his own sweet time realizing that Raph was actually a man. The two lock eyes and have a very tense moment as Charlie helps him with his dress and head back to his room. When Charlie gets back to the room, he sees a sulking Kirsty on the bed. She announces that she was pregnant. Charlie tries to console her but it's of no use. She storms off to get some fresh air. Back before she was murdered in 1998, Kirsty had been abused by a guy named Pete. Kirsty was pregnant before she was killed and believes, although regretfully, that Pete could be the father. Elsewhere, after escaping the lab, Phil goes straight back to his home, hoping to reconcile with his family. However, as soon as Bo notices him he starts yelling at him to get away. The same man who had tried to kill him earlier was here and he could not stand to see him. Phil tries to tell him that he had changed and wanted to protect him and his family but Bo wouldn't listen at all. Instead, the ignorant boy rings up James and notifies him that Phil had arrived at their place. Somehow, Phil manages to convince both his son and his wife Kath that he had changed and was not like what he was before. It takes very little for Kath to take back her husband who had been on a murderous rampage just months ago but Bo still has some issues with his father's strange arrival. After receiving Bo's call, James and William head straight to Phil's home, stopping on their way to a local store where they get to see the news that the Australian continent had suffered the third greatest natural disaster this year. A volcanic eruption had made the network signals weak all over the country. This makes William more certain that they need to kill everyone before it's too late. Later Kath takes Phil to the local store and drops him off with a long list of items to buy. Just as she drives away, Phil notices that Kate was back in town. However, Kate had noticed the man as well and quickly tries to run away as he pursues her. At the Urana police station, Paul arrives looking for James and the other risen people. However, since only Chris is there at the moment he gets no information about the location. Paul realizes that Chris was working with the risen people and so he leaves planning to follow him later. As soon as Paul leaves, Charles rushes back to his home and notifies Bell and Kai about the strange man looking for them. He warns them about leaving his house and rushes to find Charlie and Kirsty. Paul who had followed him to his house continues his trail. Back in Melbourne, Charlie, who doesn't know any better, suggests that he and Kirsty get married just so that she doesn't abort the baby. This makes Kirsty, who plans on going through with the abortion, storm off to the clinic. A confused Charlie stumbles into Raph once more and one thing leads to another which ends up with the two sleeping together. At the abortion clinic, 
Kirsty realizes that she doesn't have enough money to carry out the procedure. However, one lady from the clinic decides to help her. She even helps her deal with a bit of her trauma. Elsewhere, Kate and Phil finally come face to face and Kate manages to take him hostage. She drags him to the lake house. Phil tries his best to prove himself as a good person along the way. Back at the hotel room, Chris arrives looking for Charlie and Kirsty. After realizing that Kirsty had gone to the clinic he heads there warning Charlie to take care of himself. Chris tells them that once he comes back from the clinic they would need to leave. Outside Charlie is immediately taken hostage by Paul and it doesn't take him long to get Kirsty either. Chris can do nothing but watch as Paul takes them away. Back at Chris's house, Belle and Kai do the one thing that Chris told them not to. They head outside. Kai is confident that if they can find their family and make them pray for their souls they can leave the earth in peace. So they go back to the cemetery to check on the tombstones hoping to find some info about Kai's family. At the cemetery, Kai finds out that his son and wife had died of the plague back in China and had never made it back to Yorana. However, this triggers his memories and he remembers marrying in Yorana as well, with a woman named Molly. After realizing that he probably has some decedents, the duo set out to find them. As William and James reach Bo's house searching for Phil, they realize that he had left early morning with Kath for some shopping. Elsewhere Kate gets a call from Chris after she ties up Phil so that he stays put while James and William arrive. Kate tells him to meet her there. Paul takes Charlie and Kirsty to the Norgard lab where the director of the Norgard board, Sam arrives. Sam offers the two a very exciting deal. They could join them in Sweden where they would be a part of the research and get paid a lot as well as be given new identities so they can survive. The offer entices Kirsty, but Charlie doesn't want to trust anyone from Norgard after what they had been doing. Sam tells them that they were free to leave if they didn't want the offer, but places Paul as a sniper to kill them if they left. In the end, though, Kirsty manages to convince Charlie to agree to the deal as they couldn't run with no identities forever. Abortion was legal and free in Sweden so that definitely made up her mind. Sam calls for a private plane to take them away. After some time, Phil manages to convince Kate that he was a changed man, just as Chris arrives and informs them that Norgard had taken away Kirsty and Charlie. The three head out to look for their friends. When William and James arrive, ready to kill Kate and Phil at the lake house, they are nowhere to be found. William however notices that James was somewhat relieved to see that his wife was not there. He had started to waver from the goal they had set out to complete. Outside they also notice a dead bird lying on the ground. The bird immediately starts decomposing and within seconds starts to dissolve into the soil. The end of the world had already begun and there was no time to waver. Kai and Belle search throughout Trevor's restaurant but find no one so much so as remotely related to him. Just as Kai had lost all hope he notices a young boy at the window of the restaurant. For some reason, Kai takes this as a sign from the gods and believes that the boy is his descendant. The duo follows the young kid to a local park. As Kai hides like a creep nearby, Belle approaches the boy and introduces herself. The boy also tells his name, Noah, and confirms that he was from a line of Chinese people who had come there more than a hundred years ago. After confirming this, Belle takes the boy to Kai. Kai reveals to the boy everything about them and how he could help them. All he had to do was make a simple offering and a prayer near his grave. The boy, perhaps not wanting to go to school, agrees to help out. They head to Kai's grave and Noah begins the ritual however at the end of it nothing happens. Kai was so confident that he would be sent to heaven that he gets agitated. He even slaps the little kid thinking that perhaps he had ruined the ritual. Kai is devastated to see that his one hope of his soul's release had failed. Bell consoles him and the two head back to Chris's place. Noah is also handed back to his foster parents. Right before Charlie and Kirsty are about to board the plane that Sam had managed to get them, Kate, Phil, and Chris arrive. Even though Kirsty is hesitant to leave the opportunity the group manages to persuade her to choose her friends over the Norgard company. Sam lets them go this time, realizing that if he had almost managed to entice them once he would be able to do it again. He warns Paul, however, to make sure that the risen humans didn't get attracted to other companies. Norigard wanted to have every one of these people no matter the cost. Chris takes all of them back to his home where the group meets with the two newly risen members. With Kai having come from the 1800 he is now the oldest one among the group leaving Charlie in second place. With the world crumbling around them, the group finds solace in each other's company. At the end of the episode, James and William arrive at Chris's place, and rather than going on a murder streak, James goes for a hug with his wife Kate. William watches on. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn on the notifications so you won't miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.